In this video, we're diving into one of the most fundamental concepts in finance, the capital asset pricing model. Ever wonder how to tell if an investment is worth the risk? Capham holds the key. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through not only what it is, but also how to calculate it in Excel step by step. Let's get started. The capital asset pricing model or Capham shows us the relationship between systematic risk of an investment and the expected return on it. The entire goal of this model is to see if an investment is valued fairly by comparing risk and time value to the expected return. This is the formula that we use to calculate CAPM. The expected return on the investment, which is what we're calculating, equals the risk-free rate plus beta of this investment multiplied by the market risk premium or market return minus the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is uh, usually the return rate on government bonds. It's common to use 10-year government bonds because they're most heavily quoted and most liquid. Beta measures uh, the volatility of the investment's returns and essentially it compares the risk of this investment to the market risk. If beta is above 1, it means the investment is riskier than the market average. On the other hand, if it's below one, then it means that it's less risky than the average. And if it's one, it means that it's exactly at the market average. We use this better to essentially adjust the market risk premium, which is the expected market return minus the risk-free rate. So what's the premium that we're getting on top of this essentially void of risk option here? The more volatile a market or an investment class is, the higher the market risk premium would be. We can visualize this uh, in this uh, graph. And the main underlying concept of the capital asset pricing model is that the expected return is equal to the risk-free rate increased by a risk premium. So what we have here is, assuming that this here is the risk-free rate, this is the market return, and this is the security market line, and this is where beta is one. So the security market line essentially shows the relationship between the expected return and the systematic risk. So the more the risk is, so the higher the beta, the higher return we expect from this investment. And you see here that at this point where the market return, the beta equals one, crosses each other, this is where investment risk equals market risk. We can easily illustrate it all with an Excel example. So the example is, uh, let's say we're currently looking at an investment opportunity. It will cost us 35,000, our investment price. It would pay 10% annual dividend over 10 years. And at the end, when we release the investment, the release value will be 30,000. The risk-free rate of return is 2.5%, which is the return of government bonds with similar maturity, 10 years in this case. The beta of the investment is 1.28, and beta can be really hard to calculate, to come up with. So most uh, analysts, especially when they're analyzing like uh, stocks and uh, and various like public investment opportunities, they would use third-party sources. For example, if we're looking to invest in Apple stock, we can go to Yahoo Finance and check the beta of the stock there. The expected return of the market is 8.25%. This can change from market to market. There are databases online where you can look up the expected average return for different markets or different investment classes. This can also be our own hurdle rate. So what we expect from our portfolio, if we put that here, then our expected return of this investment would adjust our like baseline expectations with the beta of the investment. The market risk premium is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate of return. And this allows us to apply the capital asset pricing model formula up here and uh, have the expected return of the investment be the risk-free rate of return plus the beta of the investment multiplied by the market risk premium. Applying this, 
we have 10 years and then the release value. The numbers here, the release value happens after the 10th year, so it's 10 again. The expected cash flow for each year is 10% of the investment price, the 10% dividend, and the release value is 30,000. We can then use the um, formula for discounting cash flows, which is the expected cash flow divided over one plus our rate which in this case is the expected return of the investment, the 9.86% that we calculated using the capital asset pricing model formula. And uh, this is to the power of the number of the period. We apply this down and uh, at the end, we also apply it to our release value. Once we sum all those, we end up with 33.3 thousand total cash flows adjusted for the time value of money concept, which is less than the original investment, meaning that this investment does not make sense economically, assuming that those assumptions up here are correct. And uh, this is the expected return that we're looking to get from this investment, considering its risk and what the expected market return is. The capital asset pricing model determines if an investment is reasonably priced. It is flawed as far as it relies on risk and returns distributions, the behavior of other investors, and some fundamentals of the market that do not exist in the same form in reality. However, the concepts behind CAPM can help us understand the connection between expected returns and risk and thus assist us in improving our decision-making process when deciding whether to add an investment to our portfolio. Now that you know how the capital asset pricing model works, I want to show you how to build entire assumptions-driven financial models in Excel. And to do so, I've recorded a four and a half hour financial modeling course that's available absolutely for free right here on YouTube. And uh, you can check it out in this playlist up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the first video.